Jamari Jamari Drake is still losing, bro. Recently he dropped uh his 100 gigs just songs, bro. I don't even think you want to call it a a project, you know what I'm saying? 100 gigs uh few songs he keeps adding on to it. I believe it's on his YouTube channel. I don't know, bro. I don't know, but he he dropped something recently and in one of the songs he of course, had thrown shots at Kendrick, uh, subliminally, you know what I'm saying, uh, obviously put two, put two and two together, you know what it is, but he's still losing, let's get it. So at this point, it's been over three months since the climax of the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef, and since I last spoke about it on my channel, a lot has happened. On Kendrick's side, he's really only done two things. But if this was a boxing match, it would be like him landing two <laughs> massive right hooks after he noticed Drake's legs started to wobble. Obviously, the first thing he did was host the pop-out concert back on Juneteenth. <clears throat> Here we saw yep. Kendrick perform for over an hour and a half. Facts. And this was the first time we would see him since he released the hit record, Not Like Us. Obviously, the crowd was sold out. It felt like a very big moment. Played it Dr. seven Dr. times. Drake introduces him and he comes out to set the tone with Euphoria. Kendrick would then go on to perform some of his biggest hits from Humble, to DNA, Money Trees, and All Right to Name a Few. He would also play 616 in LA and even bring Dr. Dre back out to perform Still Dre and California Love. Now, obviously, the highlight of this concert and the moment that everyone was kind of waiting Seven for times, was I think. when Kendrick would perform Not Like Us. Spinning the number one record in the world six times as six. the crowd sang every word back to him every single time. Now, with every playing of this record, Kendrick would bring a bigger and bigger crowd out on stage yep. with people both famous and culturally affiliated up there to dance on Drake's grave. And during this concert, Crazy. Drake fans everywhere were scrambling, very upset that an arena full of people, including LeBron James, were rapping along to their goat being. Hey, bro. All right. In the case of LeBron James, right? Of course, he's close with both of them. Assuming, right? Is LeBron James wrong for vibing to Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us song and singing along? Is he wrong for that? <clears throat> yes or no? Should that ruin the relationship he has with Drake? Yes or no? I think no to both those questions, but that's just me. All right. Y'all let me know, though. Called a PDF file. Drake takes you and, like, am I letting you down? Yeah, what did I tell you? What did you say to him? He said, he said that. I, I can never let, like, let you down. Drake fans in general have been unwell since the destruction of Drake began. <laughs> like it's been almost Bro. four months since the inception of the direct beef. And many of his bot fan pages have been crying ever since. With some of them becoming so delusional that they actually think Drake won. Amongst the Drake dick riders, Academics is obviously the most famous, even creating a separate <laughs> Twitter page for the sole purpose of creating positive Drake propaganda and a ton of Kendrick slander. Several times having to delete tweets Too much time in your hands, gang. In a very embarrassing fashion fuck? because they were straight up lies trying to make Kendrick's relationship look like it's falling apart. And we will get back to that as well as the other allegation that Kendrick's best friend Dave Free is the father of his kid here in a second. But for now, let's Oof. talk about what Drake has been up to because the guy's been a mess. At first, he kept going out of his way to try and push this narrative that Kendrick's diss record was only number one and only broke records on YouTube and Spotify because of bots that he paid for. He did this via a kickstream chat room where he wrote in, Hey Pragmatic, can we take it back to 2022? Can you backdoor Eddie like Spotify backdoored the streams for that one song from that one guy? And of course, academics would run with this narrative for weeks, trying to spread it around online. Like he even went as far as to interview a 16 year old kid who claimed he was the one who got these alleged botted streams for Kendrick. So if somebody reaches out to you for 30 million streams, what'd you tell them? How, many, how much money? So I was promised payments after, but up front, I was promised 5K. Okay. They told me it was for a big artist, promised 5K up front. Okay. They sent, they, uh, sent me 2.5K. And then I was also promised after the song, performed i was also going to receive you know a, a little percentage of the song so points on the song they and they also the reason they did percentage is bro depends on the situation of course of course but like a percentage is way better than just like a flat out like just price bro dog that's he made bank he made his 5k at, at, at from the jump 
and a percentage of what the shit made on YouTube, boy, the streams. Did it because they also needed that song to win. Now academics would later have Damn. to eat the crow and admit that he talked to someone with some background information over at Spotify who claims all the Kendrick streams were legit. Now I, I I'll be honest with you. I talked to. My and let's talk about it. This man does he really need streams? Y'all really think he out here buying streams, bro? He don't need that shit. My man from Spotify, I won't say the name right now, but legit Spotify, nigga. He said, hey, y'all gonna be honest with you? I don't know what that person on your stream was talking about. Them streams, them Kendrick stream was real. And to me, not only did this theory seem pretty far-fetched from the start, but let's also not forget how the stream only did- Online transfer savings, 15. What the fuck? Hold on. Stream barter claims to have been paid to bought the streams for not like us by Anthony Salah LLC. Who is that? However, there appears to be no LLC registered under that name. This man sitting at 1.2 million in his account. Whose account is that? Is that the, 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 the botter? <sighs> Shit. This theory seemed pretty far fetched Crazy. from the start. But let's also not forget how the streaming services have favored Drake in insane ways over Facts. the years. Now, ever since the public perception was that Drake lost, he has done everything in his power to try and show how unbothered he is by both Not Like Us, but also by the beatdown in general. Going bowling under the name 69 God, continuing his bot narrative, and releasing some really average songs. Like I'm talking about the Drake stimulus package potentially no longer existing. None of these mini songs he's released even came close to sniffing the number one spot, and most of them fell off the And that's crazy. That is crazy because this man is known for, if you get a feature with him, you're blowing up too, bro. Too many examples. One that sticks to my mind is uh, uh, Look Alive with Blockboy JB. That's just one song, bro, that he touched and blew the fuck up. Never mind the other ones, you know what I'm saying? That's actually insane. That's a good fucking point, bro. The songs he's released even came close to sniffing the number That's one a spot, good point. and most of them fell off the charts just as fast as they went on. Comparing this to the past, when Drake would give an artist a feature, it was almost a guaranteed smash hit. Like even <clears throat> a Young Thug and 21 Savage feature couldn't help him get there as their song would peak at 28. He would even deploy Little Yachty to help him push this unbothered narrative. He really did. He didn't give a really no no he, he was on he was genuinely unfazed Ooh. i respected a lot and i talked to him he didn't that shit didn't bother him as it shouldn't he's the he's a fucking guy still all of this has not stopped drake fans from coping with this loss in the saddest ways possible i think that people had a weird moment people were supporting a weird record i've said this from day one i'm like yo bro i just don't that message i cannot dance and groove to that message of that record <laughs> The message is just him dis dissing Drake, bro. <laughs> That's the message, bro. He's dissing him entirely the, from start to finish. And seeming like he lost and he wasn't a part of the... All of that was bullshit. It was just some shit that people made up, tried to make a real thing, tried to throw into the game. It worked. It did not work. Why did Drake, who has dominated, it worked. Thing, tried to throw into the it game. Worked. It worked. It did not work. It Why didn't... did Drake, who has dominated the last 15 Yo, years of my life, have it. to remind us? Because that record worked. No, I'm telling you, it's because people were caught up in a moment. They were yeah, caught a in a great... moment. He Kendrick smoked it. <laughs> yes, but when you say he lost, what did he lose? He didn't lose oh, I anything. Don't know. I, I did... Music Child wise, his, what his did he lose? Music, music wise, what did he lose? Between the two of them, he lost the beef. That's what he lost. Simple. L. Take the L leave. He didn't lose anything. He didn't lose money. You know what I'm saying? He didn't lose... Probably lost fans. You know what I'm saying? Supporters, whatever. But, like... Battle. Talking about the, the beef. Battle. The battle. And Aubrey's Angels would even turn on me, claiming I am mentally ill for my interest and ability to cash in on one of the biggest moments in hip-hop history. <laughs> like the sheer irony of someone who has an entire page dedicated to dick riding Drake Insane. calling me out for actually making money on my personal opinion on this situation is hilarious. Like this dude wakes up every day gargling Drake's nuts. And for what? And for what, bro?
You lit like this is a this is a fan page. This is damn near a Drake fan page, bro. And defending him for hours, but I'm the one with the issue. Not DJ <laughs> Academics, not all these other Drake meat riders who have not shut the fuck up for <laughs> one second. I mean, they even tried to make it seem like I am who Kendrick is talking about when he says it's what the culture's feeling. But it's like, no, I'm not the culture. I'm just a big fan of hip hop who loves to see two titans from my generation finally go head to head after obviously sneak dissing each other for like the last decade. Facts. These guys are the culture though, and they weren't rocking with Drake, with some of them being his good friends in the past. Now something else that Drake would do is create this alt Instagram page while also releasing some behind the scenes footage and a ton of unheard songs and demos. And to be honest, this 100 gigabyte drive that he continues to update has not really had the online impact that I felt he thought it would. I mean, don't get me wrong, as a big one yet. fan of hip hop and as a fan of Drake, it is cool to see some of these behind the scenes looks. But I feel like I haven't really seen anybody talking about it or it generating any sort of excitement. At least not what you would expect from a massive drop like that from Drake. One thing Max. I'll say about all of these Drake drops is... It's feeling very, very, very uneventful. Like Drake's music, it really marks a time. You know what I mean? It marks a time, it marks a moment. It's special, you feel me? And these leaks or these drops or however they're doing them, it's just really uneventful. I will say it's beyond clear to me at this point that there were many people in all sorts of industries who really felt like Drake has disrespectfully overstayed his welcome in the game. Like if one conspiracy is true in all of this, I think it's definitely that. Whether you're talking about the dude who used to own Twitter or Serena Williams' husband. You know, everybody was very, very excited about the elimination of Drake. Now something else that has come out about Drake is more controversy, as What's the Dirt pretty much pulled his file and found some very interesting stuff regarding more questionable activity with at the time minors, including Bella Hadid and Madison Breer. Though his his house that he has, he has a bathtub that is literally the size of this room. And it's gigantic and so dope. I was like sitting in it, I was like, can I, can I just lay here and like chill? <laughs> I even found some footage of this exact Drake Memorial Day party where you can tell that the women in attendance, to me, don't really look like grown women. I mean, come on, guys. Like, I'm a fair man, but, like, I'm not even assuming here. Like, these are clearly teenagers, right? Here he is in St. Bart's at a New Year's Eve yacht party, and what we can easily conclude about this party is that teenage girls were definitely in attendance because there's clear evidence of this happening. I got back from St. Bart's on Monday. Basically, it was an after party that we got invited to. It was on the Vava. So many cool people there. We talked with Drake for a little bit. This girl was born on February 5th, 2004, which would mean she was only 17 years old during this yacht party. I was just in St. Bart's with Drake and that 150 supermodels was in it. <laughs> and I think that Kendrick knows something about these parties. And y'all should definitely go check his full video out because there's a whole lot of Easter eggs in there Sheesh. regarding the peculiar things that Drake has done over the Sheesh. years and how Kendrick subtly wove them into these dis- Bro, I say this all the time where shit like this co uh, comes up. <clears throat> you're grown. You know what you're doing. Not only that, you're well known. You have status. You have clout. You have everything, bro. Why? Why? Why are you fucking with them? Why are you fucking with them? Why are you allowing people to invite them if it's not you? Why are you inviting them, inviting them if it is you? Why? Literally why, bro? You don't need to do that. Records. I did also want to note here that Drake has been linked to this creepy <sighs> streamer. This is my homegirl from Toronto right here. Ra raid her stream right right. right this okay. is my homegirl. She is very funny and she's very crazy. Who has been asking unsuspecting individuals to get nude on stream using one of those video chat websites that connects you to a random person while also not divulging that she is streaming to thousands of people and obviously not verifying ages. Hey girl, you are so pretty. How old are you? Thank you. I'm 18. Oh, you're so pretty. Do you want each other are Hey girl, you are so, you are pretty. so pretty. I feel Adam. like you and I can solidify this friendship and each other. What do you think? He's streaming. No, I wouldn't get you to flash. That's rude. Why do you get so freaky on here, Snow? Like, what? Why is that? Like, why do you get? Why do you make? Why do you? I literally tell freaky? people I'm a guy. It's just funny trying to get people to get freaky, and then you tell them you're a guy, and they still don't feel away. They still want to do crazy shit. Now Kendrick's other major <laughs> hook that he would land was with the "Not Like Us" video, which. <sighs> What's that saying?
We're making the wrong people famous. The wrong people is making all the money. Has amassed over 111 million views as I write this. Sheesh. The video itself is riddled with Damn. slick imagery and allusions to various Drake allegations and of course some not so subtle jabs thrown in there. In this video, Kendrick once again brings out quite a few people from Compton to dance on Drake's grave. He got Kendrick even trolling the imagery from the Family Matters video in this scene. He got him doing these push-ups in what looks to be some sort of isolated set. You also have him whooping the Al Pinata's ass with the disclaimer that no OV hoes were harmed during the making of this video. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's necessarily true, as so many of Drake's fans were still crying like a redheaded stepchild. People were speculating that these storage containers were an allusion to Drake's potential involvement with human trafficking. And you also get a DeMar DeRozan appearance here. Obviously, with him being mentioned <sighs> in the song, this was not surprising. But it should be noted that he Shit. used to apparently have a pretty good relationship with Drake back when he played for the Raptors. You went to Drake after you were traded. What, what, what did you guys talk about? But besides basketball, everything, just the reassurance of like, you know, that was my, that was my, my partner, that was a right. friend. That was a friend of mm -hmm. mine. No matter what, you know, when it come to him, he'll forever have a friend in me and loyalty out of me. Then we get Kendrick responding to the family drama allegations with his wife and children. And it's quite obvious that these are both his biological kids. Like you cannot fake those years. That is genetics. <laughs> he has his wife. <laughs> <laughs> biological kids like you can I'm like pause it perfectly you dad can see their ears bro <laughs> not fake those years bro. that is genetics he has his wife dancing on drake's grave over the line about it being god's plan to show them the liar like this is all he had to say about a pretty unfounded rumor regarding their relationship it's not really like drake where you have several young girls talking about their personal connections with him not to mention it's worse it's worse on him, bro. You can try everything on Kendrick, but you're, you're done. Mention that this music this video look is directed good on you. by the person Drake claims to be the father of Kendrick's baby, his best friend Dave Free. People were also clowning Drake when this music video came out, saying that he could never do this with his family. Because not only was his hand forced when he revealed to his son due to the Pusha T beef, but we also know that the woman he got pregnant was a corn star whose image he was trying to clean up. People were also noting Damn. how Drake was trying to break up families with this beef. And bringing up this <laughs> clip where Pusha talked how Drake was trying to break up families. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Families with this beef. Oh. And bringing up this clip where Pusha talked about how Drake looks at family relationships in general. What is the real issue with you and marriage? So then now I gotta, now I gotta dig deeper into who the person is. Now I gotta dig in and see, what are y'all like? What's your family like? Oh, your dad left you at five. Oh, I get that. You, he never walked you to the bus stop. Mm. You're mad about this. You know, your mom, she never remarried. Oh, you don't even know what like family is. So you, of course you don't dig marriage. And lastly, we got the symbolism with the light-skinned owl in the cage, which I think is Kendrick's way of saying that he has the control now and that he essentially Sheesh. has Drake trapped in the corner. Ah. Now, while this music video <laughs> premiered on YouTube... Yo, it's so crazy because, like, that vi this video right here, you can interpret... You can interpret it any way you want, bro. It really is just perspective and how you, like, think. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, bro. It's a million different, like, meanings and started trending online, Michael Rubin's white party for the elite was also going on. And of course, Drake and many other celebrities were in attendance. Apparently, Drake was nervous about this and he pulled up with a massive entourage. In reality, I heard that Drake showed up there, all that bullshit about niggas got limited amount of tickets. I heard they gave Drake about 20 tickets. He showed up with all his goons and he was in there looking to see what's popping with anybody who had static. You might have to do the pop out with 20 niggas. Like, yo, what's popping? What's going on here? What's going on here? What y'all doing? <clears throat> Certified what, nigga? What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. Moving and many tacked. people noted that Drake was looking around a decade older than usual in these photos. Like, this man is pushing 40 years old. I think it's time for him to stop calling himself the boy. Also, to me, this party's just always screamed weird Illuminati shit going on. Y'all know P. Diddy used to host these things, so enough said there. Throughout this piece and even in the aftermath, Sheesh. my main takeaway was actually how stark the contrast is between these two superstar rappers. You have one dude addicted to fame, power, and all that it entails, and the other seeming to try and live as normal of a life as he can. And at the end of the day, Facts. Drake ended up with a seriously damaged ego. Bro, I feel like... <laughs> 
I feel like this year alone, we see more of Kendrick than any other year he's ever, like, ever since he's been in the game, bro. Like, like I'm talking, like, when he first started, maybe a few years into that, went completely ghost, you feel me? Dropped his music or whatever, just went ghost again. But, like, this year, it's been a while since we've seen him, like, like this active, this outside, I guess I can say, right? Oh, in my opinion... And the way he has decided to move since his loss has been desperate. From leaking his own songs to test the waters of public opinion, to using DJ Academics and other streamers as his mouthpiece, it really all tells me that he doesn't know what to do at this point. Like back when he went to war with Pusha T and clearly lost, it was like, okay, I'm gonna use LeBron's podcast to try and clean up this kid situation, then I'm gonna go ahead and drop a couple of hits, and it was really all good, most casual fans could care less. And I actually think it's in his best interest to go away for a little bit, make the people miss him again, and then he's gotta come back dropping absolute hits. Because the songs he's put out lately and been featured yeah. on have had almost no momentum outside of his fans. I mean, don't get me wrong, overall he will be fine and he will continue yeah, to be facts. one of the biggest artists on the planet. Facts. But to me, this is where we might start to see the downward momentum of Drake's <laughs> career really begin. And realistically, that probably would have been the case either way, as the dude has been on top since I was entering high school. But I do think this beef really sped up that Chill. process and expose some of the biggest kinks in Drake's armor that seemed bulletproof for such a long time. <laughs> now, unless something absolutely crazy happens, this will probably be my last Drake video for quite a long time, but I did kind of want to wrap a bow on this entire thing. Yeah, I will yeah. say that Drake has claims on his fake Instagram that apparently Game 2 is coming and he's going to win. I'll put it in the front page, back page, middle page, wherever, headliners, column one or two, we... I mean, yeah, it's more content, it's more music, but then it's like, bro, you took too long. The momentum of the the momentum, momentum of the beef, it re Kendrick topped that shit, bro. Kendrick was up here with it, and you talking about some part two, if that's what you mean, bro. The the momentum gone, gang. You took too long. You feel me? We will win game two. <laughs> Off. We will win game two. So this might not be the last we see of this beef. We'll and see. overall, I don't want to see Drake crumble. I do hope that he goes on to make some good music for his fans. Obviously, I do have some questions about some of his nasty behavior over the years. But those are questions <sighs> we likely will not get answers to for a very long time. I do feel like Kendrick has a crazy, more commercial, damn type of album on the way. So I'm excited for that as well. And overall, the most pathetic thing about this whole situation to me hasn't actually been Drake, but his delusional fans. Like, this shit ended four months ago, and they are crying day in and day out, scrambling on Twitter trying to defend their GOAT. And I just find it hilarious. It's actually the main reason I'm dropping this video right here. But either way, I do want to thank you guys for subscribing and dropping a like on today's video. But as you guys know... Oh, shit, man. I was Spinny Boy, the Tan Super... The Tan Superman. <laughs> Shout out Jamar, bro. Yeah, I mean, if that's really what this is, the the game two thing, whatever the this, the momentum's gone, bro. Like, he literally he has to come out with like the craziest, most factual thing ever, bro. Like literally, like what what else? What else is there? You know what I'm saying? What else can he say or do that is not crazy or factual? That's gonna like just bring shit back, bro. And even then, I feel like Kendrick's not gonna respond if he does drop some shit. You know what I'm saying? I I don't know. Unless he has another hit up his fucking sleeve, like not like us, bro. Which I doubt because not like us is literally everywhere, bro. Every day they play it on the radio. You feel me? <clears throat> so it's like I I, I don't know, bro. I don't know. We're going to wait and see, man. But y'all let me know what you guys thought. This is crazy, man.